Good evening. This is Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship. We're in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and we're glad once again to be in your home. And thank you once again just for allowing us to be part of your family. Uh, it's an honor and it's a privilege uh, for us to have uh, this time with you tonight. And we commit that time to Jesus Christ. Tonight I want to talk to you about the power of the Word. And of course, we're talking about the Word of God. And I want you to know tonight that the Word works if you work it. What I mean by that is if you will take the Word of God and you understand it and you apply it to whatever situation you have in your life, that word works. It always works. It never does not work. And that's just good news tonight. And so I'm excited to share this message with you tonight. So let's go in and check out the message and I'll be back in a few moments. I'm going to be reading out the New American Standard Bible. The power of his word. 2 Samuel 5 beginning at verse 6. Now the king, this is King David. Now the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, inhabitants of the land, and they said to David, the, Jebus the Jebusites said to David, you shall not come in here, but the blind and lame shall turn you away, thinking David cannot enter here. Nevertheless, somebody say nevertheless, and nevertheless, David captured the stronghold of Zion. That is the city of David. And David said on that day, whoever would strike the Jebusites, let him reach the lame and the blind who are hated by David's soul through the water tunnel. Therefore, they say the blind or the lame shall not come into the house. So David lived in the stronghold and called it the city of David. And David built all around from the Milo and inward. And David became greater and greater for the Lord God of hosts was with him. You may be seeing the house of God. Now, I want to talk to people today who got a stronghold. Now, I know, I know, I know you don't want to tell that. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. <clears throat> but I want to talk to people who have a stronghold. And let me, let me tell you how you know you have a stronghold. The way you know you have a stronghold is you see God's word. You agree with God's word. You say, I'm going to do God's word. And you walk away from God's word saying with the, with the full intention of doing God's word, but you end up doing exactly the same thing you were doing before. So as an example, you say, you know, you've, you've had a, a habit of telling a little white lie. I don't know why it's a white lie. Why can't it be a green lie? But whatever. <laughs> that's your habit. That's what you have. But you, but you came to know the Lord, and you could feel the Holy Spirit telling you that's not how you want to operate anymore because God hates, hates a liar. And... So you're reading God's word and you say, I'm going to stop telling these little white lies. You don't tell any big lies. You just tell little lies. You embellish it. You tell, you say it was, uh, it was 10 pounds when it was only 8 pounds. You know, you, you tell the little, the little lie. And you read God's word and you say, I'm not going to do that anymore. But then you find yourself two weeks later doing the same thing. Anybody in the house with me? That's what a stronghold looks like. Now, that's a stronghold that you can recognize. Now, there may be, you may have a stronghold in your life that you can't recognize, that you're just deceived because that's the greatest stronghold of all is you think you're right when you're wrong. But I want to talk to people today who have a stronghold in your life that there's something that you know you should be doing that you're not doing. I want to talk to you today about the power of God's word, the power of God's word. And we have such access to God's word we, we, can, we can read it anytime we want to. We live in a free country. We can read it anytime that we want to. We listen to it on the radio. We can watch it on television 24-7. 24, 24 uh, we have smartphones. We can listen to the Bible app. We have such an access to God's word. And, 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 and generally speaking, we can say that we believe that there's power in God's word. But when we watch our behavior, I question whether or not we really do believe that or not in many circumstances. 
power of God's word, three things to help you get out of this stronghold that you're in. First one is that there's a history. If you got an issue, if you got a stronghold, there's a history to it. It didn't just show up y yesterday. Oh, it's a pretty good. It's been lingering around for a while. It has a history just as we find in this situation with David and the Jebusites. There's a history. The reality is that the Jebusites existed even from the very beginning of the book. You go back to, to Genesis and you find the Jebusites in Genesis. In fact, the Jebusites are part of, the, the, uh, the, uh, of Abraham. They're part of, of, of Noah. In fact, the Jebusites are Noah's great-grandchildren. They are Canaan's children. They, that's, that's, that's the grandchildren of, of uh, Noah. Remember the, the story where Noah went and got intoxicated and fell asleep in his, in his tent uh, without any clothes on, and Ham goes in and sees his dad with, without any clothes on. Instead of just covering his dad up and keeping it quiet, he reviled his, his, his authority and went and told his brothers about it. And his brothers came in and, and, and back, backed, it, backed it in, and they never looked at him, and they just covered their dad. And they woke up, and Noah woke up and said, he, he said, he didn't say, I curse Ham, he said, I curse Canaan. He cursed Ham's son, which meant that all of his children were cursed, and the Jebusites are, are part of that lineage. Noah cursed Canaan, and God promised Canaan to Israel, or God promised Canaan. Actually, he promised it to Abraham, but he had promised it again to Israel. And so that was the, the, the land that was flowing with milk and honey. It has a history, the promised land. The Je Jerusalem, as it said here, was really called Jebus by the Jebusites, and it was a stronghold. It was a very thickly walled city that was strategically placed between the, the land of Judah and the land of Benjamin in a high place. It was a great place to have a city. And the Jebusites, if you look back, the history is, if you look back at the rebellion of Israel when they came out of Egypt, their first attempt to go into the promised land, and we had the 12 spies that came back and gave their report, and the 10 spies said, we can't do it. The Jebusites were part of the reason why the 10 spies said, we cannot enter into the promised land. Jebusites are part of the rebellion. They're part of the reason for the rebellion. We look at Joshua 11, talking about history now, and we find that Joshua defeated the Jebusites. He defeated the Jebusites, but he never conquered them. After Joshua's death, the Jebusites were defeated again, or, or Jebus was defeated again, or Jerusalem was defeated again, but they was never conquered. The issue that you have in your life, the stronghold that you are dealing with, maybe you've defeated it for a while, but it always has a way of coming back. Anybody in the house with me today? Huh? Always has, well, you, you, you defeat it for a month or two or uh, maybe even a year, but it always has a way of swinging back around and reestablishing itself in your life again. Do you desire to have a positive impact in your family, in the lives of those you meet, and in your church? Do you see your life service as a ministry and not as a job or chore? Do you believe that your productive, positive membership in the body of Jesus Christ is an essential element to Christian mission, maturity, and ministry? If so, you will find 10 things every church member should know by Anthony Collins to be a relevant contribution toward this spiritual objective. 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins is both scriptural and practical. This book offers excellent tools to help anyone handle the business and ministry of the church with excellence. Whether it is serving as part of the usher ministry, or developing leaders, or growing disciples. The practical applications and implications of 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins are enormous. If you desire to make a positive change in your home or in your congregation, if you are currently a leader or desire to become one in any capacity, this book is a must read. The principles contained in this book, 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins, will provide you with the purpose, power, and truth that you will use to make a dramatic positive difference for the rest of your life.
Begin your journey today to positive change by ordering your copy of 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins. Simply visit our website, www.thehouseofworship.com, and click on the Shop tab. Or you can send $16.95, which includes tax, shipping, and handling to the House of Worship. 190 Manhattan Avenue, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 37830. Don't wait. Order today and watch the hand of God move in your life. Not only is there history here, you see this history of struggling to get rid of what it is that God says that they need to get rid of, and as a result, they cannot possess what it is that God says that they are destined to possess. Not only is there a history, but there's also a currently. See, that's the, you, know, you look back over the past, over the last however many years it's been, generational, generational issues, generational situations. Not only is there a history, but there is a currently a right now. You got a currently in your situation. You got a currently in your, in your problem. You got a currently in your challenge. You got a currently in your issue. And this one, the Jebusites have, because Israel has not been diligent in not simply defeating the Jebusites, but conquering the Jebusites, the Jebusites have become so strong now that they have thrown the Israelites out of what it is that belongs to them. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. They have become strong and entrenched to the point that Jebus or Jerusalem is literally a fortress. Literally, there, there is no way to get in here. As, as they survey the opportunity of how we're going to conquer this problem, how we're going to be, take hold of what it is that God said belong to me, he said it, it's literally a focus of a fortress, and the Jebusites believe they know that they know that they know that they are invincible. Now, let me tell you about your currently. Your currently is, based on your history, your currently is, you, you've been living with that thing and you've been allowing it to survive and you've been holding on and you've been trying to negotiate because you, you, didn't, you, didn't you didn't want baby girl to just leave and, you, you know, the devil told you if you, if you did that, she was going to leave and not, not never talk to you again. You didn't want him to leave and not never come back. You didn't want her to leave and, and not ever come back. You didn't want them to fire you on your job, whatever the situation is, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now that spirit that you've been... There it is when you wake up. There it is when you lay, lay down at night. When you have your, your, your Cheerios in the morning. Oh, there it is at the, at, the dinner, at the table right across from you. That spirit has become so strong and, and so bold now that it has literally become a fortress in your life. That spirit laughs at you when you go to church. That spirit laughs at you when you read your Bible because it says, I'm not going anywhere. It laughs at when you walk down front and, and have Pastor Collins pray over you. That spirit says, I'm not going anywhere. Huh? And when you look at it, just as the, the Israelites, when they looked at Jebus, when they looked at Jerusalem, when they looked at it with their physical eyes, what they saw was, it's impossible. It's impossible for us to overthrow throw this. And you and I, we look at our situation, the, the history that it has on it, with all the battles that we fought and, and we've lost. And when we thought we had won, but then we, had, we hadn't won, it came back around again. We look at it now and say, well, I, I, if you want to get rid of this, how would you get rid of it? Your response would be, that's impossible. I can't get rid of that. It's just part of who I am. It's part of my family. It's just the way it is. We can't, I, can't, I can't get rid of that. Luke 1.37 says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Oh, that's my good news today. That's my good news today. That's my good news today that it does not matter what my history has been. It does not matter what my currently is, but that with God, with God, no thing shall be impossible. Well, pastor, what is, in, what is involved? What is, what is included in no thing? Well, I want you to know today, that's a good question, but everything is included in no thing. 
no matter what it is you're dealing with, no matter what the situation might be, no matter how long ago it has gone back, no matter what the history is, no matter what the devil says, no matter what mommy and daddy said, no matter what the preacher said, no matter what the deacon said, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what the lawyer said, no matter what the people on your job said, no matter what the financial people said, I want you to know today that nothing, no thing, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. The power of his word. Your challenge and your problem has got a history and your challenge and your problem has got a currently. And you've been fighting this thing and you're thinking, I can't, I don't know what to do. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't figure this out. I can't, I can't get it. But I want you to know today that you have victory. There's a history, there's a currently but there's a victory. We see it here today in the scripture, right? So there's a history here. The Jebusites, man, they've been around, they've been hanging around for a long time. They're, 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 they're the nemesis. They're the, they're the antagonists. They're the ones who, who he's, you know, you listen to the, how they talk to, to David. Say, man, you're not getting in here. The, the, I, could, I could get all the lame people and the blind people that are in the city and just bring them out. He says, that'll be enough for you. I don't care how many people you got. I don't care how big your army is. I don't care what you got going on. You're not coming in here. Listen to the arrogance. Listen, listen to the arrogant spirit. That's the, the does he not, does the spirit not know who it is that he's talking to? But David knows. The spirit does not know, but David knows who the spirit is talking to. David said, wait a minute, man. I, said, I, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm the king. I'm the king with a little K, but I'm still the king. He said, I, I have been commanded to produce, increase, and dominate. I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been commanded to take over, to take charge. He said, I didn't come to negotiate. I didn't come to have a conversation about how what, 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 us living together and hanging out together so we can all just get along. He said, I came here to take over. Yeah. Well, maybe you don't understand who you're talking to, but you're talking to a child of God. You see, I, I, I got some history. I, I got some remembrance of some things. David, David, I know David running through his mind just like he did when he, when he, when he talked to uh, uh, King Saul. He said, hey, man, I, I, re I remember when I was out on the side of the hill uh, watching them stinking sheep of my daddy and the lion would come and try to take one of the sheep. He said, he said I went after the lion. He said, I've been, out, I've, been on the side of the, I've been on the side of the hill writing love songs and poetry to the, my God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm a man after his own heart. In today's vernacular, what he's saying is, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I love God. Maybe you don't know who you're talking to. He said, but I'm, I'm, I, I know, I know my, my daddy didn't do it. My granddaddy didn't do it. My great-granddaddy didn't do it. My great-great-granddaddy didn't do it. My great-great-great-great-great-granddaddy didn't do it. I know there's a long list of people that didn't do it. He said, but me and Jesus, we, we, we coming in there. We, we are coming in there. He says, God's word says that belongs to me. He says, that's my property in the name of Jesus Christ. I, 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 don't, I don't know how, how we got to the point that we're at right now, but I'm telling you, that belongs to me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on God's word. I'm going to believe God that I'm not just going to defeat it, but I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to make it mine. I'm going to consume it. I'm going to dominate it. I'm going to take it and make it part of who I am in the name of Jesus Christ. We're not negotiating. We're not compromising. We're not going to live together. Oh, no, not in the name of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to trample all over you. I'm going to kill everything I can kill. I'm not going to leave not even one thing alive. It might look little and it might look cute, but I'm going to give it the sword in the name of Jesus Christ. Because little cute devils turn up to be big, bad, nasty devils. Hmm? David, David, David's standing on a word that's hundreds of years old. That's the word that, they, that God gave Abraham. That's the word that God gave Jacob. That, that's the word that God gave the Israelites when they came out of Israel. That's the word that God gave Joshua. And all the while, along the way, there was never anybody strong enough to say, I, I'm, I'm standing fully and completely and totally on God's word. I stood on part of it because I defeated him. 
But I didn't stand on all of it, because if I had to sit on all of it, I would have conquered. David is standing on a word that's hundreds of years old. His commitment and his determination to honor the word of God equals the powerful release. Let me say that again to you. I'm sorry. I thought I'd get a bit of a bigger response than that. I, I, I don't need you to shout because I brought my shout with me in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want you to know today that your commitment, my commitment, Washington, to have a determination to honor the word of God equals the powerful release, the supernatural release of God in your situation. Because when I make a determination to honor the word, I'm making a determination to honor Christ. And whenever I make a determination and a commitment to honor Christ, that always stirs God the Father and God the Holy Ghost. David now, because of his commitment, he says, this is, this is not acceptable. Mm, I love David. This is not acceptable. As I look at the situation, I see that God's word is not being manifested. He says, this is not acceptable. This is not acceptable for us to be, in the name of Jesus Christ, allowing the enemy to live in our midst. This is not acceptable. I, I know that daddy did it and, mom, and daddy did it and mommy did it and then great and great and great and great did it. He says, but the, the Holy Ghost that's in me, the, Ho the Holy Spirit that's on me, says this is not acceptable Ugh. and when he comes to the conclusion that this is not acceptable right there right there there it is right there right there when he comes to, to having a commitment and a determination to to honor God's word he looks at God's word he says this is not acceptable can, can, can I can I get just anybody in the house today to look at your situation to look at the place where you have allowed your stronghold to sit down in your home and say, this is not acceptable. This is, this is not acceptable because this does not honor God. Now, if you got to go, Jeff, eyes, you got to go. But this is not acceptable. Mm. The moment that he does that, there's a supernatural release that happens in his life, and all of a sudden, David knows a secret. David knows a secret that apparently no one else has known. And that is this idea that there is an underground tunnel where the Jebusites go to get water even when they're in a battle. Mm. And I, don't know if, I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, you can go a long time without food, but you can't go long without water. I don't know how David knows this secret. Where did, this, where did it come from? I, I, I want to tell you this divine revelation. I, I like to think that, that he, he, the, the, the moment he said, that's not acceptable and I'm, going to I'm determined that I'm going to honor God, I just want to say he laid down and went to sleep that night and the angel came and gave it to him in a dream. I don't know how he knows it, but he knows it. He knows something that nobody else knows that even the spirit that's in Jerusalem doesn't think he knows. He knows something, Sister Arnold, that nobody else knows. He knows the way, stay with me, he knows the way to both defeat and conquer this thing that's been hanging around for what seems like forever. Stay with me now. Here's where you get your breakthrough. Huh? When you come to the place that you're willing to say that's not acceptable because that does not honor God. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. I, I don't even know what to do, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that that stops being what it is and that God is honored. God will send a message, send a messenger to you in the name of Jesus Christ so that you will know what to do. To honor God. He will not allow you to want to honor him, not know what the right thing to do is, and not and just allow you just to linger and no, 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 he won't, no, he won't, no, he won't. Now you might not like the answer to the to the question. Mm. 
That's acceptable. We're not doing that. That's acceptable. No, 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 you're not talking back to your mother. No, you're not talking back to your daddy. No, you're not, no, you're not disrespecting me. No, you're not going to talk to me that way. No, no, we're not doing that. Yes, yes, we are going to tithe. Yes, 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 we are. Uh, yes, yes, we are, we are not going to lie, steal, and cheat on our job. No, we, yes, we are going to forgive. Yes, we are going to church every Sunday. Yes, we're going to read our Bible every day. Yes, we're going to apply the word of God when we see in our lives. Yes, we, we, we're going to embrace everybody, no matter what the color of your skin, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, because to, to, do, to do something else other than that is not acceptable. The moment you reach a point where you say, that's not acceptable, that dishonors God, I'm not going to tolerate it, that's not going to be here, we're getting rid of that, God's releasing his power yeah. into that situation, and you will understand not only how to defeat it, but how to conquer it. Not only will you, will you defeat it, but you will never see that. That will never pop its head up back in your life ever again. But well, there it is, an, another anointed word. Praise God. Praise the Holy Spirit. The power of the word. The number one thing, the number one purpose of the word of God is for you to be fruitful, for you to multiply, and for you to, to, to increase, to you to ha have dominion in the name of Christ Jesus. It makes him look good. The first way you do that, though, you do that by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the doorway to the power of the word of God being revealed in your life. So if you've never asked Christ to come into your heart, we're asking you to do it now. If you've ever asked him and nothing really happened, in the name of Christ Jesus, I'm asking you to do it now. I can't tell you how many times I have prayed the prayer of faith because I didn't want to miss out on what it is that God had for me, not just in this life, but also in the life to come. So just ask him to be Lord, ask him to be Savior, ask him to be your king, to surrender all of you, all of your will, all of your person, all of your everything. Lord, come in and take control. Ask him to do that right now in the name of Christ. If you do that, in the name of Jesus, we want to know about it because we want to be able to share with you uh, some of the wonderful things that God will have you to know as you begin your new journey and your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to just bless you and praise you, Father. We want uh, to ask you to step into the lives of those that are watching, even now, Father, whether by uh, internet or by television, Lord God, and allow the power of your word to be revealed in their lives, Lord God. We know that the word works if we work it, because your word tells us you're not a man that, that you should lie. Yeah, you're not, not the son of a man. You don't, you don't change your mind. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Uh, you're immutable, means that you're unchangeable, Lord God. And your word is our revel is our is your revelation to us in the earth realm about the person of Jesus Christ, about your character, about um, your integrity, Lord God. And Father, you stand by Behind your word. You say in, in your word, Father, that heaven and earth will pass away, Father, but your word, it'll, it'll stand forever. So we can count on your word, Lord. So I'm asking tonight, Father, you by the power of the Holy Spirit that those are watching tonight, Lord God, they will have a new found confidence in the power of your word. They will be found stepping out more and more in, in faith on your word, Lord God, and that you always, Father, you always respond, Father, in, in, in our faith as we step out on your word. So we thank you for that. We receive that for them, Lord God, tonight in, in, in your name, Father, for your glory and for their benefit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much once again for allowing us to be part of your family. We, we love you and we're praying for you. Uh, please let us know if this ministry is being a blessing to you. We want to just, just hear, hear from you. you send us a message, um, send us an email or something to let us know that uh, we're having an impact for, for you and you still want us to stay on the air in Christ's name. So have your, we ask God to have your way, have his way in your life. Have a blessed week in Jesus and we'll see you next week at the same time. Amen? All right, bye-bye.